So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can calculate our binomial and our Poisson distributions using Excel. This will save us a lot of time in the end compared to that doing it by hand, working through our binomial function, working through our Poisson function, especially in cases where we have lots of repeated trials or just where we're wanting to create those frequency tables and bar charts from it. So let's take a look at what we do in order to use Excel for this. So jumping on over, we have Excel and we have one of the problems we had already looked at. Here we have our 42 traffic lights, right? So this was one we looked, worked through by hand in the videos. And we say, okay, on the island between Goldstream and Parksville, there's 42 traffic lights. Suppose probability you're shopped at any one is 20%. Farther, let's presume that these traffic lights are essentially saying that all of our events are independent so that we can use our binomial in this case. So, okay, how exactly do we go about using this? Well, to go about using this, we need to start writing down our bit of information that we need. So two bits that we need is going to be our number of trials and our probability of success on any one trial. So reading through the question, we have 42 traffic lights. That's how many trials we're running. And the probability we're stopped by any one is 20%, 0 0.20. What we then want to do in order to create our probabilities is we want to create a frequency table. So to do that, let's go number of red lights. That's my X variable and my probability of X. So I'd have one of each one there. Okay, so from there, from there what we need to do is we need to get all of our red lights put through. So starting off zero, one, two, three, and we'd have to go all the way down to 42. What we're gonna do, right, that'd be a lot to write down. Excel has this nice little nifty feature. We can click on this bottom right corner and we can just drag it down. And you see it's counting there, there's that little white box, 16, 17, showing us at what number we're at. So we can drag down 42 is where we want, and we have all of our possible X's, running from zero to N. We then need to figure out our probability of X. So to find our probability of x, we're going to go equals to kind of say we want a little function going on here. And we're just going to start writing binomial. Now don't write the whole thing of binomial. We'll stop at binome and we'll see it popping up here, binome.dist. That's what we want. Hit tab to activate it. And we see it popping up with the Q as to, okay, hey, put in number of s, trials, probability s, cumulative. Now keep in mind if you're like, oh, shoot, what is this again? What is it referring to? We can always go up here to this f of x insert function and click this and it pops it up and number s returns the individual term okay number of s is the number of successes in the trial trials is the number of independent trials right so it gives you a bit more of a description of what it's looking for in each case and you can build it from this sense as well but for us let's go through this bit so okay number of successes that's our x right so we want this cell here to be our number of successes. Next, we want number of trials. Well, that's our N, 42. Next, we're looking at probability of success. So probability of success is that guy there. And then finally, it's saying, do you want a cumulative probability? That is, right, just like our cumulative frequencies or cumulative relative frequencies, this could calculate a cumulative frequency, or sorry, a cumulative probability for us. No, we don't want a cumulative probability. We just want the probability of x equals zero, on and on and on. So we're gonna put in false. We close our brackets and we get our result, right? If you're like, whoa, what's, what's that? That's our scientific notation, 8.5 times 10 to the negative five. So, okay, that's gonna be a little bit ugly to look at. Let's select this column. We'll right click. We'll go down to format cells. And we'll change this from general to number. And let's go to four decimal places. Four should give us plenty of understanding as to what's happening. And we see, okay, probability of getting zero traffic lights is, well, a pretty small likelihood, 0 0.0001. What we can do is in the same kind of fashion, we can just drag this down to get the probability of all 42. But you'll notice if we do that, we're gonna get an error. And let's take a look at what this error is. Oh, number, 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 what's what's going on? What, what did we break? Well, okay, if we select our first one, right, it shows in color what we've all selected. So, okay, this is our X, 
red is our N, purple is our P, and then false is false. It's not showing up here. So, okay, that looks good. What's our next one at? No, right? See what's happened is as we've scrolled down, it's updated all of these cell references downwards as well. Well, okay, great. We want the blue one to update downward. We want our X to change, but we don't want these guys to change. So what we need to do is we need to update our uh, update our formula in order to make it so that, yes, our X updates as we drag down, but our N and the P are constant. So going back up here, N is 42. That's our red guy. The way we make this guy constant is you can hit F4. Oops, that's not the right one. F4, and we'll put these little dollar signs around it. And okay, that will be making it constant. These little dollar signs say lock column C, lock row 7. Make it so it doesn't change as we drag. Right? You could also do that manually. You could write a dollar sign in front of C and a dollar sign in front of 7. Same thing with probability, we can put a dollar sign, dollar sign. And now we'll notice when we drag down, if I click one of these guys, these guys stay constant and the X, which I didn't lock, I didn't put the dollar sign in front of my X values, it carries on down. So, okay, I drag it down, drag it down. I can drag it down all the way to 42. Excel's decently smart. If I also double click this little one here, It'll pre-fill all the way down to the end of the column. And we get our probability of each event, right? And we see that it drops off pretty much at 20 pretty quickly. So we have our frequency table. We could, right, if we wanted to, we could make this guy a little bit nicer. You could do something like making it all borders. You could give it thick outside borders, thick outside borders, and maybe make the header a bit of a different color. There we go. Right, just all, all finessing of this table. And now, well now it's quite easy to work out different probabilities. Say we want to know, hey, what is the probability that we get five red lights? Well, the probability we get five red lights, what's that gonna be? Well, probability we get five red lights, we go down, we find five, and there we go, 0 0.0707, 0 0.0707. So 7% chance we get five red lights. What's the probability that we get some value of X that is, let's say, greater than or equal to 10, right? That we get more, 10 or more red lights. Well, if we want 10 or more red lights, that's the probability we get 10 or 11 or 12 or 13, all the way up to or 42, right? So in that case there, what we want, this is our addition rule, or, or, or. And as these are mutually exclusive independent events, this is our special addition rule. So we're just going to add them up. So probability that X is greater than or equal to 10. Well, that's just going to be the sum of 10 all the way till 42, right? We don't even have to hand, add them all up by hand. We can just say to Excel, hey, take the summation of all those guys, close our brackets, hit enter, and we get our probability of this happening. What if we say, hey, what's the probability that we get more than five, but less than 10 red lights, All right? So more than five, but less than 10, that's not inclusive. We're not saying including five, we're not saying including 10, we're saying more than five and less than 10. So what's that? That's gonna be six, seven, eight, and nine, those guys. Well, again, that's an or, they're mutually exclusive. This is our special addition rule. We just need to add it up. So the summation of six, seven, eight, and nine. And we get our probability of that happening there. So very quickly with Excel, once we get our frequency table made, we can pull out the probabilities and very rapidly go on to calculate what we're looking for. Next, take, let's take a look at how we can build the bar chart. And we'll go from there. So to get our bar chart going, it's going to be relatively easy. We're going to select our frequency table. So all the way down to 42. And we're just going to go from there up to the top. We'll go insert. And we're going to go and insert a, um, where is the one that goes? Insert column or bar chart. There we go. 
and we want, it calls it our column chart in this case here. And what we're looking at is, let's go down to more column charts. There we go. This is the kind of guy we're looking for. Okay, put it in. And we have our binomial distribution and we see the shape of this distribution. Now, okay, uh, there's a lot going on here. We need to do some updates. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna add axes titles. So updating the axes titles, this is number of red lights that we're stopped at. And this guy here, this is our probability of X. What's our title? In this case, I would say that this is the probability distribution for number of red lights on the highway. And there we have our bar chart. So we see, okay, we have our probability at each case and we get a most likely to get eight lights, very unlikely to get stopped at 20, very unlikely to get stopped at zero, and we have our bar chart. Let's move on then from here. Let's go and take a look at our Poisson distribution and very similarly see how we could rapidly get different probabilities and similarly our bar chart from that. Let's jump over and take a look. Okay, so here, same idea. On average, any given household in BC can expect to have 1.8 power outages per year. And then from here, we had a series of questions like, hey, what's the probability we have two? What's the probability we have none? What's the probability we have at least three? Stuff like that. Well, okay, to do our Poisson, again, what we need is we need to build a frequency table. And then from the frequency table, we can get the bar chart. Nice thing with the Poisson, the only thing we need to know is the average occurrence, lambda, right? And in this case here, lambda is just 1.8. Okay. Now we can go and start building our frequency table. So number of outages, right? And big thing, right, that we need to make sure, hey, 1.8 outages per year, 1.8 outages per year, this here is number of outages per year, right? If the question was asking something different, like, hey, what's the probability we have an outage in a week? Well, okay, 52 weeks in a year. We have to divide that by 52 to get the average number of outages per week and then get outages per week, right? It's all proportional, so we could work through it that way. Same kind of idea, zero, one, two, we could carry on, carry on. We're gonna drag this down. I'm just gonna drag it down to, let's say 15. Let's see how that does us. And probability of X. Keep in mind with the Poisson, technically we could have an infinite number of successes, right? X could go on all the way out to infinity, but it's gonna approach zero fairly quick. Right, this guy here is our average value. Most of our observations, our highest probability is gonna be clustered around 1.8. And so I'm kind of thinking about that and saying, okay, if 1.8 is my average, where the highest probability is, I'm thinking it's pretty like unlikely that we get 15 outages in a, in a year. I'm thinking we're gonna hit zero before we get to this point. I might be wrong though, right? In which case I'd wanna just increase my X's until I get a little bit farther. All right, let's just update this again. That's X. Okay, to get our probabilities. Again, we're just gonna start off by going equals and we're gonna start writing Poisson, right? And it pops up, hey, do you want the Poisson distribution? Yes, I do, we hit tab. All it needs to know for this is, hey, what's the X, what's the mean, and are you wanting the cumulative distribution? So X, this guy, our mean, that guy, Keep in mind, we want this mean cell reference to lock. So we wanna use F4 to lock that in place, or you can manually put the little dollar signs around it. And for cumulative, no, we do not want the cumulative distribution. And we get our probability. From here, we can drag down or just double click on this bottom right bit. And it goes all the way down and we see, yeah, it very quickly approaches zero. We could again go down, right click, Format cells, change the number, and again, let's go to four decimal places. And we see that, okay, it very rapidly approaches to zero. You know what? In order to keep our bar chart looking nice, I'm actually just going to lop this off at 10. So I'm just going to delete these guys. All right, we're at zero. We don't need it to keep going beyond that point. We could have done that with our binomial too, right? 
yeah, we had 42 trials. Maybe we were interested in that. But honestly, once we hit zero, we could have lopped off, right? We could have lopped off, say, after 20, all of these guys here and had our bar chart update, right? Now it's being cut off at 20. Okay, things are going funny there. What's going on? Well, we can go like this. You're like, oh, but weren't we in the poisson? Yeah, I'm sorry. Getting distracted, we're jumping back over here. So we can go right click on it, select data. And what we're gonna wanna do is just edit this P of X, edit and series values here, go like this. And what is it saying? F8 to F50? Well, no, I want it to go to F28. So let's just update that guy. And my bar chart updates correspondingly only going till 20. So we could cut that off in the same fashion. But back to Poisson, back to Poisson, okay. So we have our probabilities now, right? We have our frequency table. Again, just like we did in the last one, we could make this look nice. We could put in all borders. Uh, we can make it maybe thick borders around the outside. And we could center and shade the top one for our title. Again, this is just all to make it look pretty for presentation. And we get the same result with or without that. Now easily we can work out, hey, what's the probability that we have one outage? What's the probability that we get fewer than four outages? Right, and we can work through these kind of cases. So probability we have one, well, that's gonna be this guy right here, right? One outage, 0 0.2975, 29.75%. What's the probability we have fewer than four outages? Well, fewer than four, that would be that we witnessed three, two, one, or zero, right? So, okay, the or popping in there, this is our addition rule, mutually exclusive events or special addition rule. We're just gonna add these up. Three, two, one, zero. And we get an 89.13% chance that we have fewer than four outages in a year. Great. To get the bar chart of this, well, same process as we looked at before. We're gonna highlight it. We're gonna insert, and we're going down to our, not our histograms, there we go, our column charts. We'll take a look at more columns, and we want this guy here again. Okay. Let's update, let's throw in our axes titles. This guy here is number of outages in a year. This guy here is our probability of that occurring. And then we have the probability distribution of power outages, power outages in a year. And we can close that. And we have our bar chart for our Poisson distribution for a number of outages in a year. And we see that this guy here is slightly skewed to the right, right? It has a positive skew to it. Okay. Well, that's that. We'll leave that for now. That is our Poisson distribution. We looked at our binomial distribution. And again, if you have any questions in doing this by hand, utilizing Excel to double check your work or to help you with your work, feel free to drop me a line, shoot me an email, reach out on D2L and the frequently asked questions. Thanks.